driving the 2018 Range Rover Velar, Range Rover's latest luxury SUV. Initially, I've never been so intimidated by an infotainment interface in my life. You're a freaking anorak. You're exactly <laughs> what people call anorak. Okay? No, I'm, I'm not an anorak. I'm a welly. I, uh, I disagree with you a little bit. I, I was initially intimidated because there's a lot of touch screen here to manipulate. That being said, it didn't take me long to figure it out. I'll be honest. I got the sense in the beginning that it was high tech for the sake of being high tech. In the end, I agree with you that the manner in which it operates, once you get used to it, it's simple and it is, believe it or not, fairly intuitive, but, as I say, intimidating at first. But getting back to that dynamic mode, you can now start measuring your G-forces when you're cornering, and also you can set this thing for bloody lap times. This is a long way from the original Defender, that's for sure. That really highlights the fact that this is a very sporting car. 380 horsepower, stiff suspension, big tires. We're talking about a car that is so much more competent off-road than a Land Rover or any Land Rover of even 10 years ago. I'm with you on that. Um, in fact, one of the things I thought was that given the sporting thrust of this vehicle, I would have ditched some of the off-road paraphernalia, dropped the mass a little bit, and that would have given this thing even better numbers than it actually does have. And this thing is very, very fast. Now, that's where I disagree with you. The whole point of a Range Rover is because one day they think they might say, screw it all, I'm giving up the job, pack up the house, we're going to Tierra Del Fuego. And you can't do that in a Camry, you can't even do that in many other SUVs. The whole point to a Range Rover is it fulfills that fantasy. The fact that they've kept that going and given it so much on-road ability, I think that is the miracle of the modern Range Rover. Do you really think anybody's going to take this Vela and tackle the lower slopes of Mount Everest? Not a chance. If I'm dropping 80 plus K or whatever this car costs, I am not going to be running down some off-road thing and having all the branches scrape this beautiful black paint. I mean, this thing looks like it was built for a Batman movie. Well, my friend, people don't spend 80 or 100 or 200 thousand dollars on a Range Rover for reality. They buy these cars for the fantasy. <laughs> okay. For driving.ca, I'm David Booth. And I'm Graham Fletcher sitting shotgun. <laughs> <laughs>